So good afternoon and happy new year. And welcome to our first webinar for the new year, where we're going to take a look at surfacing capabilities within Creo Power Metric. My name is Rob Romanowski. I am the Director of Sales Operations with 3HTI. And leading us today in our uh, presentation and, and live demo is Paul Dye, who is a Solutions Consultant and Applications Engineer with PTC's Virtual Center of Excellence. And what we're going to do today is we're going to cover briefly on a um, creative capability that is in every license of Creo called from, um, I, I guess, since it went from pro engineer to Creo, um, called Freestyle. And uh, Freestyle is, allows you to uh, more of a creation tool within Creo. And then Paul's going to go into a little bit more about the interactive surface design extension that allows you to get more um, parametric intelligence behind your surfaces for manufacturing and other purposes. So if you have any questions, please type those into the chat box. We will try to answer them as we go along. We'll definitely answer them at the end. So without further ado, Paul, you have control, my friend. Take it away. Awesome. Yes, Happy New Year 2024. Back to show in Korea, which is what we do best. So happy to be on, of course. Uh, and yeah, there's going to be a couple of different things that I'll go through and talk to around surfacing from within Creo. It's not something that is a one size fits all approach that we take towards surfacing. We understand that there are different applications for surfacing. It's not all people that need to build out fuselages or any crazy complex geometry, but also some people that just want to go through and create quick designs, quick surfaces to put their ideas that are currently on notebook into the CAD environment. But at the same time, there also are people that really need precise control over the geometry and really get to that next level whenever it comes to surfacing. But at the same time, make sure that you're being efficient. So we have a couple of different solutions that we really have to address these. And I'll go through and explain a little bit into each of these, but I wanna start first and foremost by going through some of the challenges that we typically see first and foremost, just around the conceptual design phase, as we're starting to get into designs that are a little bit more complex. It's not very easy to go through and create necessarily with your standard types of parametric tools, or if you can, it's a little bit cumbersome, right? It normally takes a little bit longer to get to the geometry that you're looking to get to. And traditionally we'll use surface modeling in CAD to get towards more complex shapes, depending on how complex it might be. It might require typically a user to have a higher level of skill to create the type of geometry. And really what you end up seeing is you have two separate design worlds. You almost have one for your artists or your more conceptual designers that are working on the beginning stages of the design and it takes a lot of time, a lot of data ends up being wasted between working from your conceptual design into the more detailed design sort of designs that you want to build out. And of course, you need to be able to make changes very quickly. And it's hard for a conceptual designer to go through and keep up with that type of work and even harder for a detailed designer to end up getting that into a full manufacturable model. So the first thing that we do to really help out with this sort of process is use freestyle. So this is almost more of the ability for you to go through and take what you have in terms of a, de a design that you have in your mind or on paper and put it into Creo. Don't require you to go through and do a bunch of mouse clicks or put in a bunch of detail. Just go ahead, start with a freeform shape or surface and go through and build that into the shape that you're looking to get to. It's normally what you might refer to as subdivisional modeling. We put what you can see here, these nodes along edges or faces of the design that you're working with. You're starting as you can see here, more of a primitive shape that you're beginning from, say a square or a cylinder or sphere. And then you're just moving the model around. You're pulling and pushing on each of the faces or the edges to get to the look that you want. So we want to put the focus more so on what's the shape, you know, rather than defining and dimensioning every single piece of that. That might be something that you do later on in the process. And this is a process that's really ideal for both your design engineers that are working more, say, on the industrial side of things, or even more if you're new to surfacing. Maybe you're a great CAD designer, but you're not a surfacing expert. 
you don't have to be, but you can still get a lot of these great servicing capabilities on top of what you're end up, that you're already doing. And on the top of it, you're still getting to very high quality production ready services, uh, what we normally refer to as curvature continuous. Essentially, Korea is not going to go through and build out anything that wouldn't be able to be manufactured or couldn't be used. You're going to be able to still get to standalone manufacturable parts from your freestyle surfaces that doesn't need to be sent off to someone else to be fixed up. Now, that's going to be the one side of the equation here where you almost don't want to have to worry about adding parametric detailing. You just want to get things built up very quickly. And it's almost the left-hand side of this you could think of. There's a Venn diagram whenever it comes to surfacing in Creo where left-hand side of things is not dimensioning everything, get to your ideas very quickly. On the right-hand side of things, you also want to be able to have fine level of control and detail. And it's less about conceptual design more about that detailed side of things and the overlap between that is really what you would refer to as ISTX or where you would find the interactive surface design extension so let me go ahead and switch over into this I'm going to talk a little bit more about what we do with the interactive surface design extension it's really combining what you have with the freeform capabilities over in something like your freestyle tool but now giving you more capabilities of adding in control and getting to higher quality services at the end of the day and still doing it in a way that is going to be as efficient as possible and not require a lot of work or expertise in order to get there. Really, we built up this design environment with ISDX or the interactive surface design extension to maximize efficiency, productivity as a very intuitive UI. I'll go through and show what this looks like. You're gonna be able to utilize things like a four window display to help you build features from multiple different angles at the same time. And that's really what you need to do. Oftentimes, whenever you're working with more complex geometry, you're gonna be working in the X, the Y, the Z at the same time. So we wanna make it easy to make changes from any perspective. And in a lot of cases, you'll probably start by creating freeform curves. ISDX makes curve creation very straightforward. You have a lot of different capabilities from within ISDX for creating any type of curve you can really think of. Ice line curves, curve on surface, curve from surface, projection onto another surface, a lot of different ways that we're getting there. And also analyzing the curves to make sure that they're going to be high quality. And we're going to use this to create the surfaces. So I'm going to make it flexible, interactive, a lot of different combinations of tools that we can use there as well. And I'm going to go through and show what that looks like. But one of the biggest things that we want our users to be able to do is take some of that freeform geometry that you're able to create in freestyle and give you some of those capabilities over here in ISTX, but at the same time, give you the ability to have more of that numeric or parametric control over there as well. So tie that in with your normal parametric services also works with things like imported geometry. You know, a lot of times see users working in the conceptual design phase start from a few sketches. So you're able to bring those in and use that for the base the, for a design. Or if you scanned in geometry, you could start there. And the bigger question here as well is who is ISDX or interactive service design designed for? Now start the big group is going to be, again, your conceptual or industrial engineers, anyone who's working in the early to mid stages of a design, starting to just try out more different types of design. But it's really for anyone that's working in Korea. So even if you're an everyday engineer or designer, if you need to get a clean cosmetic shape on the outside of your model, it's really what ISTX is very powerful for to add on to the normal parametric tools that you're already using. All right, so I'll go ahead and start by just showing a quick example of the freestyle tool so you can kind of get a visual of what that looks like. And then I'll move over and start into a workflow for using the ISDX tool as well so we can really get a more comprehensive look at what that tool looks like to go through and use. So let me go ahead and switch over here. Let me go ahead and jump into just a quick look at what the freestyle tool is going to look like here from within Creo. So we'll go ahead and jump into our interface. And here you can see that we're going to begin here with a sketch for a helicopter design that we want to go through and build out a shape around. So this might be something that an industrial design either has an idea for, doesn't have necessarily a CAD model associated with it. It could be some type of sketch that we're starting from here. But first thing that we would do from starting into freestyle is start with your primitive shape. It's either going to be a surface or a solid. In my case here, maybe I want to start with a cylinder. And once you have that basic shape, it's just a matter of telling it what you really want it to do. So you can just use the dragger here to move it where you'd like. And what we're gonna do is use these right-click menus to make 
the change in that geometry and changing that primitive as fast as possible. So you don't have to go through a bunch of different menus up at the top. You have this quick menu that you can go through to manipulate the geometry, to select on certain edges, make rotations if you'd like to. It's meant to be very quick and easy to go through and make these type of changes depending on what you want. So we're just going to follow right along the sketch that we have in the background here. So if we want to go through and make that an extrusion, we just go ahead and select that right from the quick menu. And at any point, if you want to duplicate that or build out different segments, whatever it may be, it's just a quick click of a button, right? We just make it as efficient as possible to go through and create this geometry. We're just creating some splits there to give us a little bit more control wherever we may need it. We can go ahead here and look up towards the face here. So say, for example, you want to now base off of this and go ahead and create that more conic shape. We can just go ahead and create a split there at our surface. And what it allows us to do is have a little bit more specific control. So you can go through and select on certain faces or edges, change their locations. You can also go through and make those either hard or soft creases to maybe transition the flow of your design a little bit easier there. And the reason that we have these splits and what we created there earlier is so we can go through and now have selected control over these particular areas of the design that we want to go through and make changes to, right? So you don't want to have to think about every single change that you're making and the dimensions and where everything needs to go at the end of the day. We just want to make quick, simple edits, right? If you want to drag something around, you just go ahead and drag it. If you want to say, hey, I want to go through and expand on a particular segment here, just go ahead and do it, right? If you want to make changes on the fly from any direction that you really want to, feel free to, right? It's just a matter of selecting on the points, the nodes, the faces that you want to make changes to and clicking and dragging them wherever you'd like them to go. So it's very, very free, right? That's why we call it the freestyle is because you're free to make changes at any point along the way. It's not a big uh, tree of menus that you have to go through and work with. If you just want to move something around, just click and drag it wherever you might want it to go. So again, a lot more that we could really do with this freestyle tool here, right? So we can go through and really make these sort of changes very quickly and easily like that. And it's gonna be again, more towards the beginning to mid stage of the design. But if you wanna to start to create and get a little bit more control over this process, this is when we're gonna to start to work over on the side of your interactive service design extension workflow. So let me go ahead and switch over into this. And again, if you have any questions throughout this, feel free to ask, of course, right? I'm just gonna go through and switch over and open up another tool here. There we go. And we can go ahead and jump in with this new design. Search up the model that we want to start from here. So I'm going to go ahead and start from an assembly that we've already been working on. This is off of a motorcycle demo set. And here we're going to go through and design a protective covering around one of our handbar designs. And we can do similar to what we were doing over on the freestyle side of things, where if you want to start from an image, I can kind of show you what it looks like to bring in one of these here, first and foremost. So let's go ahead and bring that in, get it aligned. And this is a typical workflow that you might see from a surfacing perspective, where we'll take those initial sketches and use them as the foundation for creating more of the 3D features. Go ahead and get that where we need it to. Let's go ahead and bring in another sketch here. And we're really going to use this as the framework from working either from the front, from the top down, or even from the side. And with any of these sketches, as you can see, we're able to take them, we can rotate them. If we need to scale things, even if you need to change the transparency or the color of the images, we can do that as well. So this is really going to help us as we're going through and starting to build out some of the surfaces here. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Once we have those images in, we're ready to go ahead and create some surfaces. So what I have here is a curve laid out for this outer beam. So even if we hide that uh, outer beam here, we'll still be able to tie it back in with any of the surfaces that we create from here. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the surface creation. So if you want to work with this, it's going to be under the style tool, as you can see. And we're going to start with some curves. And curves are really the foundation for the surfaces that we're going to build out in the style tool. As you can see, it's very easy to go through and build out those right here on the model. We can kind of put them in loosely if we'd like to initially and then better define them as you move along here. And at any point throughout this, we're able to do curvature analysis. So we can see how smooth the curves are that we're building, especially at any of the points where you might have transitions. And I want to align this better with the sketches that we had from before. So what I'm going to do here is work from a multi-view approach. It allows me to see all the changes that I'm making from multiple orientations at once. 
So we can change the size of each of those views and really focus in on the one that we're designing, but still get some nice context in from the other views while we're making some changes here. And that's really important whenever you're working in 3D space as you're going through and moving the curve in one direction. Well, what is that going to do from the Y or the Z direction? This makes it a lot easier to see that throughout that process. And we can go through each of these views here. Just make sure that the curve that we're building out is aligning well with those 2D sketches. And we can also go through and make sure that the curvature is transitioning well between everything that we're building out. Let's go and do the same sort of thing down here at the bottom. And what you'll notice is that I can really lay out these curves as precisely or as loosely as I'd like to, but you're still able to go through and define that level of detail as you move along. Again, you always have that curvature analysis available. You can switch back and forth between that single view back into the multi view to get some better context into the changes that you're making. It's very variable in that sense. And while we're in the edit curve, you can go back in and add more points in very quickly. You can move those points around. You can see what that's doing to the curvature plot, just to make sure that each change that we're making is really doing what we want it to. And if it's not, very easy to go back into any of those views, make whatever changes that we might need to, but you're much less likely to have any issues pop up unexpectedly later on. All right, so this is looking pretty good. And we have a couple other ways that we can go through and create some different curves here as well. So this is going to be what we call a planar curve. This is going to use three reference points that we have along some of the different curves that we already have reference to. Let's go ahead and get this built out. So we'll go ahead and start up at the top, select one here in the middle, and finish that up down at the bottom. All right. And once we have that one good to go, we'll go ahead and uh, place a couple more here that we're going to use to define our surface after this. Maybe this one will use a radial planar option. Just means that I'm going to select a point on one of those curves. And that plane that's created is going to be normal to the profile sketch that we selected. So you can move that along it. And it's going to keep at any point normal along that curve that we created. And we'll do the same sort of thing here with our third curve using that same radial planar curve. Go ahead and do this over on the right-hand side. It's a lot of curves that we placed in. Very quick and easy to get those all laid out. And once we have that, we can go ahead and start into our surface creation. So we'll do that by selecting the curves that we want to go along that boundary of the surface. And we can also select some controlling curves that we have there in the middle as well. And just like that, got our front surface created. And we can move on to some more detailed sections here. So we'll go ahead and move up to the top section of the model. And the first thing I want to do is add in two 3D free curves here along some of our existing curves. It's going to make sure that the surfaces that we're adding in here up at the top are going to transition very well into the surfaces that we already have built out there in the front. And with any of these surfaces, we'll just go through and select on four of the bounding curves right along the outside region that we want to place that curve in. Go ahead and do the same thing over here on the right-hand side of the model. Right, and once we have those surfaces good to go, we'll go ahead and focus here on the middle section. And it's going to be similar to the very first surface that we created. I'm going to go through and add in a couple controlling curves here in the middle of the region where we want to place a new surface in. Now, the main difference is I want to be able to control the tangency between both of the endpoints here. So a lot of different options. If you want to make it surface tangent on any of the endpoints, you have that quick and easy control all from within that quick menuing as well, similar to like we did over on the freestyle tool. And again, at any point, we can go right back into that multi view. We can move that curve up a little bit. This gives us a little bit of context to see maybe some of the spots that we're close with, but not quite there. We can go through and make those changes have more control over that curve from multiple perspectives. And we'll also just make sure that we have everything positioned down there at the bottom view as well. All right, that curve's looking pretty good. We can move forward here into creating some of these middle surfaces. So let's go ahead and get the smaller half here by using some of the bounding curves on the outside. Go ahead and control the tangency as well, similar to like we did before. All right, and now with this larger section, I maybe actually on the fly, I want this to be indented a little bit. So what I can do is add in one last controlling curve here. Let's go ahead and place that from within there. And we can always edit that to make sure that it's going to be tangent. You can see some of the different options that we have here for everything from tangent, curvature, acceleration, continuous at any of those connection points. It's going to give us those lines to show us exactly what that's doing there. All right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and create our last surface up here at the top. And while you're defining that, again, you can define the transition between those surfaces at any point. And go ahead and add in that controlling curve that we have there in the middle. Go ahead and select on that, and we're good to go. All right, 
last section that we need to touch on is the section down here at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and repeat the process that we went through up at the top so you can get another look at that to kind of confirm on maybe what you saw from before. So we'll add in our first curve along the left, we'll add another curve on here on the right hand side. And with those two curves, we can go through and place our two surfaces on either side. So what we're doing here is essentially creating four sided surfaces, but you could do more than four sides if you wanted to. You could just as easily build out lofted surfaces, swept surfaces, a lot of options that you have at your disposal at any point while you're working. It's really whatever is going to give you the best way of getting there. Now we're going to go ahead and come here and finish up the center section. And again, the quick menuing that we have here is going to be very important and very efficient for defining things like your, ta your tangency or your curvature. While you're working, you know, you want to be efficient. So we want to make your picks and clicks as efficient as possible here as well. So that's really what ISTX is all about, whether it's for the multi-section view, the quick menuing, right? We created a tool in ISTX that's going to allow you to create some fairly complex geometry, but do it in a way that's going to take less mouse clicks, less hassle to build things out, and still at the end of the day, give you a lot of control throughout that process. So here, we're just going to go through and kind of make sure that our center curve is aligning with the initial sketch that we started with. Go ahead and drag that until it's good. Right, and I think that's looking pretty good. So we can go ahead and fill in our first area down here at the bottom with a new surface. We'll do that similar to how we did with the other two surfaces by selecting on the four curves along the outside. Make sure we have all those and also make sure that the tangency is gonna be correct. It's looking pretty good. And last thing that we'll do at this bottom section is fill in the top section in that bottom area. So go ahead and add in another point that we can use to control that curve and then to a little bit just like we did up at the top. There we go. We'll go ahead and pull that in a bit. And that's looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and add in our last surface here. And again, once you go through and do this a few times, you'll really start to get the hang of working from within ISTX and the style curves. It's going to be quick and easy to go through and get these built out. Right. And once we've gone through and built out some of these different surfaces, what we're able to do then is understand the quality of the surfaces. So what we can do first and foremost is some reflection analysis to see how well things are transitioning between different areas that we've built out. It's going to be these zebra stripes so you can see some of the reflective properties of the surfaces just to get some insight in the actual quality of the surfaces that you're building out. See if there's any issues that you may not see just from working within the standard parametric environment. And now I have that for the base of my design. We probably don't need those images that we started with. So we can go ahead back into our view here and hide some of those images. Go ahead and hide the front, the top view. All right, so good to go and move on from here. So now the surfaces that we build out are currently all from within that one style feature. So what we wanna do is merge the surfaces together into what we call quilts. If you haven't worked with quilts, they're essentially just gonna be a grouping of one or more surfaces. And once we have them all together, you can see that maybe we have a little bit of extra material that's gonna overlap some of the hard geometry that we had in the model. So we can go ahead here and do just an extruded cut to remove anything that's gonna be in those areas there. And now we have essentially everything laid out where we want it. So we can go through and start to round off some of the harder transitions. There we go, it's looking pretty good. And what we also wanna do is remove the area where the hand guard is gonna attach back in with that metal support bar. So in this case, I have a surface laid out that's gonna define that slot for where that bar needs to be located. So we can go ahead and jump into our merge tool to essentially subtract out that slot area on our new surface. It might, might also be another area over here on the side where the cover is going to attach back in with the rest of the assembly. So that just, again, goes right back in with your standard Creo extrude. You can go ahead and tie that right back in there. All right. So once we have that, we can go ahead and use some rounds to smooth out some of the harder edges that we have on some of the surfaces. Again, the rounding functionality in Creo is also another area that's very robust. You can do things like a quarter round on the outside edge of our front surface. Also on that inner edge here, we can go ahead and get that with a nice consistent radius for that round. And now that we have everything laid out, we can go ahead and now take that surface. And if we want to go ahead and use a thicken to make that into a solid. And that's gonna be a solid model that we can take forward. 
And there we go. We have our model that we can take forward. We can work around. And what's really powerful from this point now is going to be the full associativity that you have from some of the surfaces that you used to define this all back to the rest of the parametric features that we had. So that means that if we have any of that hard geometry that we used to define those surfaces, if that were to change, maybe, for example, this inner radius here for our curve needs to be decreased. Well, again, as soon as you do that, everything's going to update. Even if you want to bow it out a little bit, everything's fully associative. All those features are going to update. So everything that we create in ISDX is going to be seamlessly connected in with anything that we do in Creo going forward. There we go. So that's what it looks like to work from within the interactive service design extension. We're able to go through and build out surface geometry very quickly and at the same time have full control over the process there as well. All right, so again, if you have any questions on what we've gone through here, uh, feel free to drop those in. But really, at the end of the day, what we want to give you is multiple different tools, depending on the use case that you're working with, what comes up from within your design process, and really what's going to give you the fastest way to take what you have out in your imagination or what's on in pen and paper and get those into an actual model that you're able to work with in Creo going forward. Right, so, so that's all I have to go through there, and I can pass it over to you, Rob. Excellent. Great job as always, Paul. So I want to thank, thank everybody for being on today. I'll have the recording up on our YouTube page and email you guys the link by tomorrow. Uh, if you have any, any questions or you want to see more of a detailed demo on interactive surface design, freestyle, anything Creo, anything Windchill, you can you know, respond to the emails that are sent uh, regarding the invitations to this webinar, or you can email us at info, info at 3hti.com, or you can call us at 866-624-3484. Um, Thanks again for being on, everybody, and have a great day and happy new year. Take care.